How's it going, guys? Everyone uh, tuning in. Um, not our usual episode this week. Usually we uh, we bring you some stuff across the league and everything, but one of the purposes we decided to come up with this show and bring it to all of you was to give you a glimpse into the lives of NFL players and, and what goes on, uh, especially during a season. Yeah. And uh, right now there's one topic on the forefront of everybody's mind, and it's seemed right to kind of designate an entire episode to, uh, what's happening as a result of last night's incident at the uh, Bills Bengals game uh, involving Demar Hamlin? So um, yeah. it is Tuesday at five fifteen on the dot uh, p.m. Eastern time, and um, I guess we're going to offer kind of our thoughts on last night's incident, everything yeah. involved with it, and uh, how that is affecting the rest of the NFL. I don't even know if we want to call it an episode. This is kind of a reaction yeah. video that we thought we'd bring to you guys. So Definitely does not feel right to to comment on anything else that happened throughout this week or anything that's going to happen yeah. next week. Right now, a lot of focus and just, I don't know, energy is all devoted towards what uh, DeBar and the Buffalo Bills and the NFL is going through with what happened last night. So Yeah, need, needless to say, but we're going to do it anyways. Our thoughts and prayers are with... Uh, obviously, Demar Hamlin, his entire family, and uh, both the Bills and Bengals organization. So, I guess uh, let's talk right away. Um, Monday night, halfway through the first quarter, just about actually five fifty-eight remaining exactly. Um, this takes place. What are you, what were your initial thoughts? Were you, first of all, were you watching the game? Me and uh, me and Dad, Dad's and Tony, we were watching the game and um, decided we we're going to go to a restaurant and watch the remaining of it. So, on the way to the restaurant was when. Um, we found out about the incident. Immediately turned on the game on like my phone just to hear what was going on as I was driving. And yeah. you want to talk about terrifying. You see all the videos of, of the reactions of guys on the field. Um, and immediately you think of putting yourself in, in their shoes and um, in DeMar's family's shoes. Um, the things that they're going through emotionally, it was uh, demoralizing and it was, it, it's scary. It's scary to, to see anybody go through that, uh, let alone somebody that's doing the same thing uh, that you are, uh, that is playing football, you know, a game. Um, but we were watching it and uh, hearing, hearing the commentators be very unsure initially um, about what was going on um, and then hearing how serious of a incident it was it was like i said it was terrifying and um immediately i think if i would have seen the reactions of players live on the field i would have probably lost it um it, uh, in terms of uh my emotions um for him and his family um but it was uh obviously nothing that was uh taken easy by anybody yeah we uh we were not watching the game in the Kelsey household, and I was just sitting on the couch. I don't even remember what I was watching, to be honest with you, because um, this kind of took center stage the moment we found out about it. And Kylie, another wife from uh, another player on the Eagles, texted her and asked her if she was watching the game and whether she was witnessing what was taking place. And uh, that's when we kind of started following it. You know, I watched all the the, the replays of the incident. Uh, you turn the channel to the game, and you're watching everything taking place. And... You know, I think the you know the video when I first watched the video, uh, I was kind of, and this is before we had turned the TV on, just the pure replay of it. It was very um, you know it didn't look crazy until you know Demar f fell down afterwards. Yeah, and it looked very odd. Um, it's like you know was he concussed? What's going on? Um, and then when you turn the TV on and you had the game there it really became evident that it was something very serious when you started seeing the reaction of the teammates, the players on the field, uh, you know, grown men brought to tears. Hmm. T the teams were across the field with each other. You know what I mean? It became something much bigger than a game of football at that point. And that's when you knew something very serious was happening down on the field. It's hard to even describe, you know, the feeling on the field. You know, I can't imagine what those guys are going through. Uh, the level of uh, uh, uncertainty you're seeing somebody perform CPR to a teammate. Like, you know, I think multiple players talked about that being a point of shock to them because, you know, we've all seen, you know, guys lying unconscious on the field. We've seen guys with neck injuries. 
but there aren't too many times you've seen CPR administered, and that's when you know it's something, hey, this is something way different. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on right now, but this has not happened. Uh, this is not normal. This isn't something that you see in a football field. So, um, you know, that's when I think all those guys really start to realize this is something way different. Not that this is at all similar, but very coinc- coincidentally, we had a teammate with the Eagles this week go down. Uh, Josh Sweat mm-hmm. went down with like a neck injury. Yeah. And I remember being on the sideline. You know, it messed us up. I was. I remember taking a knee and just looking and waiting for his legs to move, Man. waiting for his hands to move. There's a few things that have brought me greater joy than seeing Joshua today, this morning, and knowing that he's going to be all right, knowing that he's going to be good, that he's not devastated from some like injury that's going to um, affect him for the rest of his life. Um, in the moment, we got to know that on the field. So we were able to get back out there and go about playing football, even though it probably still affected us. So for these guys not to have that, you know what I mean? To, to really not know what still was going not to on. Have that. Yeah. yeah, to still really not have the clarity of what's going to be uh, the future for DeMar. Um, man, I can't imagine what that feels like for these guys uh, on the field, uh, for his, his parents. Um, you know, it, it clearly has, uh, has gripped the entire NFL community. Yeah. I, um, there's, uh, there's not much we can really say. What did you think of when it first happened? I guess, what was your immediate thoughts? Immediate thoughts are you go, at least for me is, you know, his family, what his family is going through. Um, I'm terrified to ever be laying on the field and having you or mom or dad, you know, in question of everything that's going on, you know, yeah, that's probably the sickest feeling you can have as a player in my mind. Uh, that's, that's why I always, if even if I'm banged up, if I can get up and off that field and show that you know any anything, you know, I'd rather do that than to be laying on the turf. Um, yeah, that doesn't even sound right. I, I don't even know. No, I mean, well, I mean, unfortunately, you know, football is a very violent sport, and and and. Injuries like that can happen. I mean, I'll never forget, and I feel ashamed that I don't remember the game. I'm pretty sure it was the Tennessee Titans game when you had uh, the concussion and were lying down on the field. Even then, I tried to get up as fast as possible. It was the wrong thing to do. Yeah, well, but. exactly. That made it even more scary. As a family member, man, I can't tell you, there's absolutely nothing crazier than witnessing somebody you love and not knowing whether they're going to be okay. It's it's absolutely the uh, the worst feeling in the world. That's why I don't remember who you guys are playing half the time because immediately, you know, everybody you know forgot about that. I forgot about it. I'm just thinking about it. You know, it's just, and I'm trying to text guys. Are you all right? Um, I mean, that was insane. Immediately, whenever something like that happens, you you think about the family members and the friends and the teammates and seeing all the guys' reactions. The people on the field. closest to them. Yeah, the people that know them. You know what's going on? How are they? What, how are they reacting? We play this game to give those people specifically happiness. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and um, to strike fear in their minds, to strike worry. That ain't it, man. And that's um, that's unfortunate. It's it's a scary feeling to even try and put yourself in his shoes, um, or okay. their shoes. Yeah, yeah. Just a, a lot of love for uh, for his family and friends and everyone close to him. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrifying. So you guys had work today. You guys had meetings. How did yeah. how did the Kansas City Chiefs how was the reaction in the building today for you guys? Yeah, the first thing we had was a team meeting. Um Coach Reed brought up our head athletic trainer, um, who's well respected around the league and has a very clear understanding of what goes on during the NFL game day in terms of what's on the sideline at every single NFL game because of the possibility of something like this happening. In yep. terms of uh, someone getting injured, and there's anywhere from 35 to 40 medical professionals that have their eyes on the game at all time that are working specifically for situations like this, or if somebody were to get injured on the field, anyway. Yeah, and it's um, it was it was a little reassuring to hear, you know, that you know how safe of an environment it is, and that because of that, um, Demar has a chance to be all right. But at the same time, it's um, it's still, it's still very uh, I don't know, 
there's not there's not much I can really I'm not I'm not good at describing these feelings, man. This is uh it's 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 a tough one to even go through. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's never going into cardiac arrest is a bad um a bad situation, but the NFL field with how many medical professionals are on the field, ambulances are nearby. They have the uh oh my gosh, I forget what they're called. Um yeah. AED basically shocks your heart back into beating. All these things are there and on scene. So it's, it's, you know, one of the safest places that that can happen outside of being physically in a hospital. You know, there is everything in place possible to try and um, assist as, as, as quickly and efficiently um, as human beings have the technology to do pretty much. And, um, you know, hopefully that was enough. You know, we didn't have meetings today. We were back in the building for treatment uh, or people that wanted to go in to kind of get a jump start on the week. And it was all anybody was talking about. I'm sure we'll have a meeting on it tomorrow as a team. People have been texting nonstop. Coaches asking how you feel, what's what's going on. Have you reached out to anybody? Um, you know, pretty much the only person that I really know that well to reach out in the Bills organizations, one of the coaches, so I reached out to him today, but... I think everybody's processing it differently. One of the craziest things about like an injury on a on a sporting field is, you know, sports is like supposed to be the place you go to kind of get away from problems. It's supposed to be an area of a different domain kind of, you know, whenever anything's going on outside of your life, it's it's one of the things that you can go to that's always there um to man just get away from whatever else is going on. Yeah, you know, whenever whenever I've had problems outside else. of football, you know, family members, uh, friends, uh, whatever it is, you know, football is like its own area that you can just go out and play a game. You know, that's what makes this incident particularly troublesome is that this is how all of us get away from these types of things that are going on that you you you, you want to step away and just get lost in the game get lost in, you know, having a good time with your teammates and, you know, to see this happen on a field, primetime television around a lot of, you know, our brothers in the NFL. Yeah. You know, it's shocking. And it's certainly, you know, everybody's going to process it differently. And, uh, you know, for me, you know, I went into the building today, tried to get a fresh start on this week's opponent. Uh, but man, it's still, it's, it's all around. It's, it's, it, it it is being talked about all over the place. I don't think I've ever heard the word commotio cordis used um, as much as uh, I have in the last 24 hours. And I hope I never have to hear it hear again. This much ever again. Yeah. yeah. This is. I mean, that's a um, that's a terrifying uh, thing to even know is possible. Yeah, I remember a uh, lacrosse player years ago, unfortunately being struck in, you know. His heart stopping. I remember Chris Pronger having commotion cordis uh, from a slap shot. He was able to make a, a full recovery. But yeah, I mean, you see the hit to the chest. You see a lot of the signs. You know, we'll find out more as things progress. But you know, it's still uh, so fresh. I'll be interested to see what our team meeting is like tomorrow. Well, we we know one thing, and that is that everyone uh, everyone's very sensitive of the subject. Everyone wants to support. Um, Demar, his family, as much as possible. Yeah, the outreach and, by uh, the NFL community has been unbelievable. I mean, I think yeah. his uh, Toy Drive Foundation is over four million dollars raised. Pretty amazing support from the NFL. You've seen multiple, uh, uh, you know, people reach out. I thought Mike Tomlin's video, in particular, was outstanding. I mean, shocker that Coach Tomlin hits the nail on the head again and speaks to Demar as a human being, as a fellow Pittsburgher. Um, as a guy who he was able to watch mature grow and to realize his dream and how much that that's affecting him. And yeah, I, you know, it, it's truly, uh, been incredible seeing the amount of, uh, people that have, uh, been able to, uh, come together off of this, uh, tragedy. Yeah. And, uh, I would say, um, hats off to Zach Taylor and Sean McDermott being the first ones to realize the entirety of the situation and that even how much this game means to a lot of what happens in the AFC, they realize that this game is uh, is exactly that, and it doesn't it doesn't hold any place in the, in this time. Yeah, 
taking their teams off the field, realizing that until we find out that he's okay, this game doesn't mean a damn thing. Yeah. And um, it's uh, and that's and that's what it felt like. I I couldn't imagine having to go back out there and play and trying to play this game after something like that, and I couldn't. I don't think I could. So I just want to say I appreciate uh, both teams' head coaches being able to realize the circumstances. For sure. I mean, I think you know, you know, we've all played games when guys have had traumatic injuries or uh you know terrible things happen but this was different there, there was some level of there's like no fin- finality to it like when a guy has a concussion he's motionless you find out what's going on whether he's going to be okay you know even when a guy has like a neck issue and it has to be taken off in a cart or like an ambulance you know right away what's going on and again i think playing the game allows you to kind of get away from what just happened but this one it was really evident with not just the circumstances involving DeMar and not knowing what was going to happen, but also just, I mean, the players, you could tell on their faces on the field that they had no business going back out there. The, the, the level of uh, distraught, the level of um, you know, you know, the amount of guys that were emotionally uh, just completely detached was evident on the TV. And, you know, it's good on Zach and Sean for both uh, being able to realize, you know, hey, none of these guys are in the headspace to come out here and, and and do this right now. Let's let's all step away and let's. And I'm sure there are a lot more people involved than just uh, you know Zach and Sean, but um, it definitely appears that those two guys in particular, um, you know, knew that this was not something that was going to be able to take place. Yeah, how do you get ready to play Week 18? Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't, th- I don't see, yeah, I don't even want to get into it. Sure. I, today it was a, it was a very, I want to say awkward day, but it definitely started like that. Sure. Um, awkward might not be the right word. It was, uh, it was a different day that, that presented a lot, a lot of different emotion. It wasn't, uh, your typical Wednesday install yeah. or, you know, yep. base install day. It was, um, it was just a lot of, um, unfortunately, sad emotion going around. And uh, I feel like what happened uh, really sobered everybody up into realizing yet again just how, how serious uh, of a game it is that we play. I guess, uh, you know, for Week 18, you know, for me, uh, I think just getting back in the building and going back to playing football, uh, you know, I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but that's one of the ways I process, you know, things going on in my life. And it's my process. I mean, I know everybody's not going to be this way, but for me, a way to kind of, you know, get clarity to, to move forward um, is to do something that I've done my whole life and to do something that I love uh, with a lot of people that I love. And, uh, you know, the NFL is an incredible community and we found that out within the last 24 hours. We found that out last night with the support that all the fans and, and, and media and everybody had for the Bills and Bengals players, not just DeMar Hamlin and his uh, family, but for the entire situation going on. Uh, we found that out over the last 24 hours with the amount of support. Everyone's good. I mean, uh, you know, former teammates that have reached out to me to ask, you know, how I'm doing, uh, who I've reached out to. Uh, you know, yeah. the game has been brought back to – Uh, what it is the NFL has been brought back to what it is and that is something that unites um, a large amount of people that a lot of people have in common and you know getting back out there and back with my teammates is for me uh, you know one of the greatest joys that I get to partake in I think that that's how I'm getting ready for for next week Um, we'll we'll all be following uh, you know the um, the situation with Demar and how it progresses, um, but man, it's it's it has been um, encouraging. Uh, I don't know. It's been encouraging to see the humanity in everybody regarding this entire incident. This is such a privilege to to be in this this league um, and to have the amount of support that we have from all of these fans. I mean, Demar Hamlin's uh, charity, the Chase and M's Foundation toy drive as of the time of this is already at four million dollars and that's all pretty much happened within the last 
24 hours. You were mentioning getting back out there and playing and um as scary as it as of an incident that it is um the honor that you can have to go out there and play for him, play for you know the people that are dealing with what they're dealing with uh to give them try and give them excitement, trying to give them something to get away from what's going on in their daily lives. Uh the honor that I get from that is um it's priceless, man. You can't put a dollar amount on that. You can't put a ticket on that. Um I willingly will go out there and uh and, and honor just like I honored Brian Shazier. Yeah. Just like I honored Alex Smith. Yeah. Guys that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Absolutely. Well said, Trev. Yeah. So coming together is the is the best way that I think we all can deal with it and that's what we're doing. And um yeah. As for week eighteen, whatever ends up happening, the whatever the NFL ends up deciding, just uh just know if we end up going back out there to play, I'm sure every stadium will have uh two teams playing their tail off for uh for DeMar. Yeah. The entire league right now is Demar, is is behind DeMar, his family. Yeah, I don't know. I can't say it any better than you just did, so I'm not going to. And uh, you know, again, our thoughts and prayers are with DeMar, his entire family. Yeah, I mean I think that wraps it up uh for this week. You know, felt like this was really the only news we wanted to really touch on. It's uh, yeah. the only thing that felt like it was right to really talk about because it's pretty much the main thing that's on all of our minds as NFL players. We'll be back next week with, you know, hopefully a uh, more normal episode and hopefully good news. Great news. Yeah, from, from DeMar. And uh, obviously, again, uh, nothing but love and support to, to him and his family and both – the Bills and Bengals organizations, and to everybody that's uh, that's that's dealing with this uh, on their own, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's not fun, and I we appreciate everybody that's reached out to us. Uh, it's definitely uh, it's been helpful, and it's uh, it's definitely um, yeah puts uh, things in perspective. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys.